He's come to give us the gift of salvation, which is free. Have we stolen? Have we cheated? Have we defrauded people of their wages? Have we taken advantage of the poor? Have we lied and bear false witness? Have we lusted? Have we been people of envy? Tonight, let's come before this great God who offers us salvation. Salvation is not just about following commandments though. It is about letting Christ take possession of our lives. We have a God of mercy. Do not be afraid of asking God to come into your life tonight. Do not be afraid of asking him to take possession of all those areas of our lives where we struggle. This is God's plan. His plan is for salvation. His plan is to set you free. Let us climb the Lord's mountain to the house of the God of Jacob that he may instruct us in his ways and we may walk in his paths. Almighty God wants to beat our swords into plowshares, our spears into pruning hooks. He wants nations not to raise the sword against another, nor shall they train for war. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. No plan, no man-made plan can bring us salvation. Economic prosperity is not the answer. A better education is not the answer. Code of ethics is not the answer. Only God and his son Jesus Christ will give us the answer. For God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. And all of us are sinners. Paul says, Everyone is guilty. No one can claim heaven by being righteous because everyone has sinned. And Jesus delivered us from the power of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. God transferred us in whom we have redemption and the forgiveness of sins. Colossians 1.13 Our struggle, brothers and sisters, as we think about our lives, 
is not with flesh and blood but with the principalities, with the powers, with the world rulers of this present darkness, with this evil spirits in the heavens. Ephesians 6, 12. God created us to need God, to achieve true peace, justice and truth the spiritual realm is not an optional extra Jesus Christ tells us this very simply and directly I am the vine you are the branches whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit because without me you can do nothing John 15, 5. In dealing with the third truth, the triumph of Jesus over the rule of darkness, Jesus Christ manifested the triumph over darkness at many points. One of his most dramatic was during his visit to the territory of Gardeners, as described by Matthew, when he came to the other side, to the territory, two demoniacs who were coming from the tombs met him. They were so savage that no one could travel by that road. And they cried out, what have you come to do with us, son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the appointed time? And some distance away, a herd of many swine were feeding and the demons pleaded with him, if you drive us out, send us into the herd of swine. And he said to them, go then. They came out and entered the swine. And the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea where they drowned. My brothers and sisters, Jesus conquered sin and death he is the only one that can conquer sin and death and he offers you salvation so he can conquer sin and death in your lives say yes to jesus say yes to jesus say yes to salvation say yes to salvation say yes to the way yes to the truth yes to the life that he is offering you through salvation So what are you all going to do tonight? How many of you all are here doing the Life in the Spirit seminar? Put up your hands. Last week, Friday, what was the talk about? All those who went, came to the Life in the Spirit seminar last week, stand up for me, please. Let's stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Those who came to your life in the spirit seminar, please stand up. Who gave the talk on the first night? Who gave the talk? Who gave the talk last week? But he just come in my place and mash it up on Wednesday. Then people can't forget that at all. They're still talking about it all the way to tonight. They say, where are you going? I say, I'm going up and people are praised. He said, by Brother Winston. I say, by Brother Winston. You, saw, you know he mash up the place. But he mash up the place. Last week, Friday. What did he talk about? No, man. All you're quiet in the place, man. If you're talking about God's love, the whole roof have to raise. What did he talk about? But God's love is not like macaroni pie if you eat macaroni pie you need to eat again when you're talking about God's love it must so fire you up that you will never forget God's love you give them the same talk you give us on Wednesday you give them a different talk on God's love that was the introduction 
he gave you only talk of God's love. And how much God loves us. That God would send his only begotten son into this world so that we would have life and have it to the full. But to be able to receive God's love, we must accept salvation through him. So tonight, don't tell me all you're going to forget. Because the next night, we're going to talk about what? A new life could only come, could only come through God's love and you accepting salvation in Jesus Christ. So don't forget that. Sit down and write it down now. God must change your lives from today. When you walk out of here, you should be bouncing going down the road. They should see that there is a change in you. They should smell it. They should see it. They should hear it. They should feel it. How many married women inside here? I'm talking about doing the life in the spirit. Time. Stand up. Married women, stand up. Stand up. Married women. How many married women I have inside here? I didn't say divorced there. Eh? I say married women. How many married? All your, your husband here? Is your husband here? Is you? Darling, is your husband? Is your husband here? Is your husband here? Your husband. Only I'm bringing all your husband. You invited him. Your husband should see a difference in you when you go home. He should say, I want that. I want to be saved. Whatever you're doing, I want it. That is the witness that you must be because you've heard about God's love. You heard about God's salvation. And when you walk inside, your husband should hug you up. He should say, darling, I don't know what it is you have, but I want it. So invite him next week. You have to invite him next week. All you could sit down now. All the husbands stand up. Husbands. You know, this is like me going to give a talk about prostate cancer. <laughs> Father Elton, I think it's, uh, no, it's Father Cornelius. He said, Derek, I want you to come and give a talk about prostate cancer in my parish. The church was packed. 400 people. Only 12 men. <laughs> what woman come to hear about prostate cancer? What, 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 what? I don't understand that. Where are the men? I'm not seeing. Give me a married man. Let me see all the married men who've come to do a life in the spirit seminar. Please stand up. You understand what is going on inside here? Not a married man came to this life in the spirit seminar. All of you who want to get married, stand up. And that's the only way I could go, you know. Married men don't want to hear about salvation. They know they're dead already. They get married. <laughs> Where are our married men? How many women inside here? Those were all the married women, right? They didn't have it. So everybody else here single? All these, all these single women stand up. Single women, please stand. Single women. So I talk in, is the seminar I'm talking about? I'm not talking about instructors and those who will be leaders of groups. I'm talking about single women. You all are all single women. You all are all single for Christ. You all want God's salvation. You all have heard the message of salvation tonight. So therefore, when you leave this place, you're not going to dance like all your single. You're not going to dress like all your single. Or you're not going to take selfies like all your single. Because you are now bought and paid for by Jesus Christ. Nobody single in this place. All of us belong to God. Redeemed by his precious blood. Paid for by his blood. You all could sit down. So who the Dickens is everybody else? I'm trying to find out. 
Who is everybody else? I only see about four married women. Nobody inside here is a married man. You only give me a couple single ladies. So, who else inside here? Let me see these single men. Please stand. Single men, stand. Stand. Can I please get all these single men? Single men, come up. Come up. Come up. Come. Come, single men. Come. Come. No, no, no. I want a little. Come, 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 come. 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 All the single men in the house, come up. Come up. We're talking salvation here. Single men. Are trying to get 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Where? You're tying your shoelace? Come, come, come. Let me go. Let me go, let me go, man. Let me go, let me go. Let me go. Single man, single man, single man. God looking for all you. God needs strong men. We have a problem when men don't stand up and accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Tonight, I am prophesying. Tonight, I'm saying that God is calling you to do great things. Great things for him. God is calling you to preach about the love of God. He is calling you to call men back to God. He is calling you to tell people about God's salvation. He is calling you to have a new life. He is calling you to repent. He is calling you to have the spirit in you. Women. Let's stretch out our hands and let's pray for these men. Let's pray for these men. You're a single man? He what? If he stand up, she say, if he stand up, he go be single. <laughs> Woo -woo! Winnie? All you understand why priests single? That's why it's pretty single, you know? But let us pray for these men. Almighty and ever living God, you want to raise up men. The world needs men. Men to stand up. To stand up for you. Men to be witnesses for you. Tonight, Almighty God, these men doing the life in the spirit seminar, we ask you to send your Holy Spirit. Send the power. Send the wisdom. Send the strength. Lord Jesus, tonight you told us in prophecy, I call you to be saints. You said tonight, I call you to love. You said tonight, I will give you peace. Lord Jesus, you call these men tonight to be saints. You call them to experience your love and through your love, peace. God, let them be prophets of salvation for you so that those who see them may see the living Christ in them. And as tonight's gospel says, you want to live in them and you want them to live in you. We thank you for them saying yes. Jesus says, you did not choose me. I chose you. I want all you to understand that. God chose you to be here tonight. So I'm going to mark all of all you for Jesus. Jesus, I mark my brother with the sign of the cross. I claim him for you because he is your son. Because almighty God, from before he was created in the womb, you knew him. And you called him and consecrated him. And you have a divine purpose for him that only he can fulfill. That you, Lord God, give him everything freely freely received 
Lord Jesus, raise up mighty men for you, Lord God, in your holy name. Let them be people of praise, people of power, people, Lord Jesus, who would die for you, Lord God. We praise you and we bless you and we thank you for these men. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You all could go and sit down, my brothers and sisters. We bless you, Lord God. God's ways are much better. God's ways are much better than the world's ways. And his desire is to rescue the human race. The infinite justice of God demands a redress for the sins of humanity. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, deluded, and slaves to various desires and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful. Hateful ourselves and hating one another. But when the kindness and generous love of God, of our Savior, appeared, not because of any righteous deeds we had done, but because of his mercy, he saved us through the bath of rebirth. And the renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he richly poured out on us through Jesus Christ, our Savior. So that we might be justified by his grace and become heirs in hope of eternal life. For you all, for all of us, the gift of the Holy Spirit is crucial in order to live a new life of freedom from sin. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God which is given by Jesus to all believers. Tonight, as we are in the first steps to this life in the Spirit, let us accept God's gift of salvation. Let us tell Almighty God tonight, Yes, Jesus is Lord. And God the Father gave full power and authority to Jesus to bring freedom and new life and salvation to those who accept him. Jesus himself says it. All power in heaven and earth has been given to me. Matthew 28, 18. And the Apostle Paul explains this authority in his letter to the Philippians. Have among yourselves the same attitude that is also yours in Christ Jesus, who through, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every other name. And that, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And salvation is ours through Jesus Christ. Salvation is ours through Jesus Christ. And no other name can give us salvation than Jesus Christ. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. God's purpose is peace and life. Amen.